Welcome to the Joint Operational Media Brief. I welcome to the podium Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Thank you so much. Yesterday was a day of transition, one in which when our remarkable first responders, the search and rescue teams, our police and fire that have spent the last two weeks digging through that rubble, desperately trying to find uh, the potential for survivors, transi transitioned to recovery. When that happened, it took a little piece of the hearts of this community. I, I just first want to thank all of the first responders and everyone who has been involved in this effort because without them, I'm not sure that the families would have been able to be sustained in the way that they have been. And now we're going to be there for them going forward through the next phase of this. Part of my responsibility, in addition to thanking the mayor and this incredible team that is assembled behind me, is going to be to make sure that when the cameras turn off and when the, uh, the hard work begins to make sure that the recovery for not only the, uh, those that have been lost, but the families who have lost everything, uh, that, that we make sure that that pathway is as smooth as possible. So I've been working with our federal agencies, NIST, the SBA, FEMA, OSHA, uh, so many of the federal agencies that are going to be a part of the long-term needs that each of these families is going to have, that the communities that I have the privilege of representing in Washington are going to have, because obviously in an unimaginable, unprecedented tragedy like this one, no one budgets for this. No one plans for the kind of response that is necessary. And so making sure that we stay in this for the long haul is going to be absolutely essential. And we don't know just what the needs are going to be. Some of them are going to be needs that we can accommodate, try to accommodate by adding to the federal budget. Some of them may ultimately end up requiring an emergency supplemental appropriations bill. I'm going to be continuing to work with, uh, with my colleagues here to make those determinations and also working uh, at, the, at the very most personal level with my constituents to see how we can help them just get through the overwhelming bureaucracy that, uh, that, that this tragedy has represented. Because imagine being a family who has lost everything, including loved ones, and the devastation that they're trying to climb out of, also having to deal with their lives. That's my job. That's the job of my team, is to help make sure that we can help them, if not ever become whole again, to make sure that we can start to piece back together the shards of their life that have been blown apart. So it's a great privilege to be able to do that and to work with this incredible team uh, to help get them to that place. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congresswoman. I welcome Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, we were the last two days monitoring and responding to tropical storm slash hurricane El Elsa kind of job toggled back and forth. As these things go, probably as minimal impact as we would have anticipated if we went back four or five days, there was not any widespread property damage. Unfortunately, there was one reported fatality. It was kind of a freak thing where a tree fell on somebody uh, in, a, in a vehicle. And so we're obviously very, very sad to see that. But in terms of any widespread damage, it came, there's some water, there's relatively modest wind, and then it moved through uh, the state. And obviously, the further west it tracked, the less impacts that we saw here, which is something that we are obviously concerned about. We're also working to provide as much relief to the families from the state perspective as we can. So I've uh, ordered all our folks to suspend any type of property tax enforcement. I know Mayor Kava is doing the same for these uh, notices. And my goal is, is to suspend, waive any law I can under the state of emergency to forestall that. And then we probably will just ask the legislature to remit any of the property tax liability from Champlain Towers South. And so we'll work hard on that. And, um, and I think we'll be able to get that done. Also going to meet with some uh, families about any outstanding needs. You know, I think FEMA has been great. The county has been great. We have charitable organizations. Florida DEM has been all hands on deck. But there are things that pop up that maybe people weren't thinking about. So we want to be responsive. And there's been a huge outpouring 
uh, of charitable interest, not just from some of the organizations that we know, uh, but either other folks are asking me how they can help. So I think we want to channel that in appropriate ways. Uh, and then finally, just with yesterday's news, it's um, you know very sad. I remember getting the call uh, that said there was a partial collapse of a condo tower, and I didn't see images yet. I was thinking maybe some balconies fell. And then you saw the images on TV when I was en route down here. I was like, oh man, that looks pretty bad. Then when you got here, the TV didn't do it justice. And so it was a really devastating thing, but we, we hoped that there would be survivors located. And when we didn't get it initially, it's kind of like uh, really gnawed at you inside. I know it was just absolutely terrible for the families to just not get any information about a survivor being found. It was the best efforts were being employed for sure. And then I remember, I think it was the Saturday after it happened, being out there, more debris was being removed, but then some of the smoke and the fires, and I just had a real uh, bad feeling, it was like in the pit of my stomach, just, man, this is, uh, this is not good. But they kept carrying on, they did, they did all that they can, uh, that they did all that they could. Uh, but but it's, been a, it's been a rough couple of weeks, and, and I think the waiting, and trying to is there hope will we be able to have a miracle it, i think i know it's weighed a lot on the families it's weighed on the whole community i know it's weighed on all of us who've been participating in this response and so so yesterday was tough um i appreciated what they did for for doing the vigil but the, the work's going to go on and obviously they're going to identify every single person and we obviously want to do all we can for the the survivors uh and the family members uh, to get them on their feet as best as we possibly can. It is not going to be easy. This is a, a big uh, void that's going to be felt, not just in these families, but in this community as a whole. But we, we understand this is not something that uh, the, pretty soon there won't be cameras here, but we understand that this is something where there's, the needs are going to continue. And so we want to be there. And we want to be helpful for folks. Thank you, Mr. Governor. <clears throat> Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez. Buenos días. Eh, obviamente el gobernador en los próximos, en los últimos dos días ha estado monitoreando muy acerca la tormenta tropical Elsa. Eh, gracias a Dios el impacto ha sido mínimo. Eh, sí queremos reportar que lamentablemente una persona ha fallecido debido a un árbol que cayó encima del vehículo. Eh, yo creo que eso quiere volver a subrayar de que las tormentas obviamente son Eh, tienen la, la, el propósito de que las personas estén al tanto porque de verdad que tienen eh, la posibilidad de ser fatal y en este caso estamos muy tristes de anunciar que una, una persona ha perdido su vida. Eh, con respecto a la, la tragedia aquí en Surfside, el gobernador sigue enfocado, su compromiso es con los familiares, con los sobrevivientes. Eh, él ha estado trabajando con el departamento de ingresos para pedirle que vayan a suspender cualquier eh, impuesto de propiedad en este momento y tiene la meta de trabajar con la legislatura para ver si esos impuestos se pueden eliminar por total. Eh, eso será una conversación que vamos a tener con la legislatura. Sabemos que la alcaldesa también está teniendo esas conversaciones a nivel local, eh, pero eso es nuestra meta y esperemos, esperamos poder conseguirla. Eh, sabemos que ayer fue un día muy difícil cuando cambiaron de operación de búsqueda y rescate a búsqueda y recuperación. Es un día muy difícil para todos. Sabemos que esos familiares al inicio del colapso, cuando recibimos información, el gobernador mencionó que lo avisaron temprano en la mañana. Él en camino para acá vio las imágenes en, en la televisión. Pero cuando llegó aquí, de verdad fue que pudo entender Eh, lo que es la magnitud del desastre y para nosotros ha sido muy difícil hablar con los familiares, escuchar, eh, sentir su dolor y queremos reiterar que vamos a estar aquí, vamos a seguir continuando nuestro compromiso, llegará un punto cuando las cámaras no están aquí, cuando la prensa no está aquí, pero nosotros vamos a, a continuar hasta que la última persona, el último, la última víctima y los familiares pueden recibir esa información que tan desesperadamente necesitan escuchar. También estamos comprometidos con las organizaciones caricativas, con nuestras agencias estatales, coordinando con las agencias federales para asegurar que la ayuda que van a necesitar, no solo al corto plazo, pero al largo plazo, que el Estado va a estar ahí comprometido con asistir con esa ayuda. Muchas gracias. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. Good morning. Here we are on the morning of day 15. It's officially two weeks since this unthinkable and unprecedented tragedy shook our community and the world. Our teams paused their work on the pile this morning around 1.20 a.m. for a brief moment of silence to honor the two-week mark since the collapse. And we have now officially transitioned from search and rescue, from search and recovery. The work continues with all speed and urgency. All task forces are being deployed from across the country and the world. Uh, we are working around the clock to recover victims and to bring closure to the families as fast as we possibly can. Since our last briefing, the team has recovered additional victims. The number of confirmed deaths is now 60. With 35 victims identified and 34 next of kin notified, 200 people are accounted for and 80 are potentially unaccounted for. Our detectives are working hand in hand with the crime scene and medical examiner uh, personnel, moving as fast as we can to identify the victims and notify the next of kin in order to bring closure to the families. And I also want to take a moment to talk about the extraordinary work that our team is putting into the recovery of victims on the site. Every victim we recover is handled with extreme care and compassion. So we have had faith leaders embedded in our operation since the beginning, including rabbis and faith-based organization called Zaka that's working directly with the Miami-Dade Police Department to do everything possible to handle the remains of Jewish victims in a manner consistent with the Jewish faith and with all the care and sensitivity possible. We have a tent designated on site and when a Jewish body is discovered, a prayer is performed and specific protocols are followed to honor both the faith traditions and the integrity of the investigation. We're also proceeding to collect and catalog the, five, the following items, personal items as they're identified on site. Any legal or identifying documents, any photos or albums, school graduation documents, jewelry, wallets with documents such as credit cards, tablets, iPads, oh, excuse me, credit cards, debit cards, etc., and also small communication devices like cell phones, tablets, and iPads. Any religious items, any engraved items, any firearms, any safes, and any currency is being specially set aside. If found, our team will be carefully tagging these items and we're creating a process for families to submit reports about such items that they're missing as we work hard in the weeks and months ahead to reunite family members with whatever items are possible. I want to thank all the first responders and all the teams who've given everything they have to our search and rescue and now to our recovery mission. You are our heroes and sheroes. Please pray for the families who are grappling with impossible news and her grieving. May God give peace to all those whose hearts have been broken and watch over and care for this community in the difficult days and months ahead. Buenos días. Aquí estamos en el día 15, oficialmente dos semanas después de una tragedia que rompió los corazones de todos alrededor del mundo. Nuestros equipos detuvieron su trabajo en la pila esta mañana alrededor de las 1.20 de la mañana para un momento de silencio para honrar la marca de dos semanas desde el colapso. Ahora hemos pasado oficialmente de una operación de búsqueda y rescate a una operación de recuperación y el trabajo en la pila continúa con toda velocidad y urgencia como antes. Nuestros equipos han recuperado víctimas adicionales. El número de muertes confirmadas ahora es 60 con 35 víctimas identificadas y 44 familiares notificados. 200 personas están contabilizadas y 80 potencialmente desaparecidas. También estamos recolectando y catalogando todos los artículos personales que encontramos entre los, los escombros para que las familias puedan eventualmente recuperarlos. 
Gracias a todos los socorristas y a todos los equipos que han dado todo lo que tienen a nuestra búsqueda y rescate y ahora a nuestra misión de recuperación. Que Dios traiga paz a todas las familias y que vele por nuestra comunidad en los difíciles días que siguen. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Good morning. As we move into an additional phase of the rescue slash recovery operation, it is now more critical than ever to make sure that the families have every bit of governmental and private support that can be afforded. To that end, I met with Governor DeSantis and Mayor Cava regarding the aggregation of the support agencies, the many support agencies. I know that getting all of our available resources to the families as soon as possible is everyone's main goal. On a different subject, I want to add that in addition to the ground penetrating radar that we have employed on the structural members at the Champlain North Tower, we have also taken core samples of concrete to determine the strength and composition looking for potential salt content which can significantly uh, compromise the structure. Lastly, I want to express my heartfelt thanks from Surfside and all of our residents to President Biden, Senators Scott and Rubio, Governor DeSantis, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Senator Pizzo for the incredible, incredible support and dedicated support and consistent support that they have provided to this town and our families in this rescue effort. I want to direct extra special gratitude to Mayor Cava for steady, consistent, and compassionate leadership. However, I want to save and express my most passionate thanks to the search and rescue teams, all of our fire and police departments and their professional and dedicated leaders, among them Chief Kaminsky, Chief Jadala, Director Ramirez, and our own town manager, Andy Hyatt, and our police chief, Julio Yero, Surfside loves and thanks you all for everything that you have done and continue to do. By the way, we are all still praying for a miracle. We haven't given up all hope. Thank you for continuing to pray for our families. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Small representing the Small Business Administration, Roberto Baltodano. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are announcing today that we are relocating the Business Recovery Center just, just around the corner from where we are. We're currently at 96 in Collins. Effective tomorrow, we're going to be at 9484 Harding Avenue, which is, again, just around the corner from where we are. Any individual who is unable to visit us either at the Family Assistance Center and or at the Business Recovery Center can visit us online at sba.gov forward slash disaster or give us a call at 1-800-659-2955. Y ahora en español. Estamos anunciando que a partir de mañana por la mañana estaremos reubicando nuestro centro de servicio de recuperación económica para los negocios. Estará ubicado en el 9484 Harden Avenue, lo cual es a la vuelta de la esquina donde estamos actualmente. Cualquier individuo, persona o negocio que no pueda visitarnos, así sea en el centro familiar o en el centro de recuperación empresarial, nos pueda visitar en sba.gov, raya oblicua desastre, o llamarnos al 1-800-659-2955. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, Roberto. And our Creole translator, Leonel Lederbourg. Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Aujourd'hui, on a 15e jour depuis l'accident euh, arrivé. Et à, deux, à une heure et 20 minutes matin, il y a une pause qui était faite. C'est une pause de silence en honneur de Mounsaïo qui était victime d'un moment tragédie. Ça. Recherche continue et nous passer de stade côté nous était passé à recherche et sauvetage pour nous arriver à, à recherche et récupération. Il y a une autre victime qui te joint. Nous passer à Kounia à 60 victimes que vous découvrez et nous connaît que vous ne savez vérifier et que vous mourrez. Il y a 34 là-dedans que vous identifiez déjà. Il y a 200 que nous connaît qui sont qui réellement vivants et il y a 80 que nous pouvons trouver. Vous cherchez continuer à faire pour vérifier que 80 ça effectivement c'était le monde qui était dans le building. 
Nous t'a même dit on bagaille pour SBA parce que SBA c'est organisme état ici qui a bay mon opportunité pour gagner l'argent à bon à bon taux intérêt. Ma ba nous deux informations sur lui. C'est sba.gov ba oblique disaster et au capable tout prend téléphone ou relé 1 800 659 29 55. Merci. Thank you, Lionel. And as usual, as we've been as transparent as possible answering all the questions to you, unfortunately, the mayor has a really tight deadline to be at the Board of County Commissioners within the next 30 minutes. So we're going to allow one question, and then they'll have to leave. Good evening, Mayor. So it's proceeding just as rapidly with just as many people on the on the pile there are some slightly technical differences that I'll allow uh, the, the fire chief to explain but essentially we are taking as much care as ever to proceed to find uh, victims in the rebel we literally have one minute left unfortunately yeah you know, the ultimate number is going to be more than double what it is today as far as confirmed uh, I know we're only two plus weeks in but any discussions about a future memorial at the site for people to go and pray down the road? So I think for most of us, we, we don't want to have it be business as usual. We want to do something different to commemorate, and certainly discussions have begun how that could happen. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. 5.30 is the next briefing time, same place, 5.30.